hi, I didn't see you there. Congratulations, if you click on this video, you have got your first offers for vet school and you're so excited to start. Here are some tips and things I wished I knew someone told me before starting first year. It'll be mostly on study techniques, so let's dive right in. Timestamps is down below, so feel free to skip along to parts that you will find most useful. The first thing to say is that being in first year, sometimes it can feel very distant from where you want to be because it can take five or six years before you become a vet. And you might feel like you're learning all this theory that doesn't really make sense in a clinical context. But trust me, you don't want to skip it because these are very important foundations and principles that you need to get in your head so that when you come out to becoming a vet, it really helps into making a clinical decision in terms of how physiology works. For example, you know, like the sympathetic nervous system and how certain drugs work as well and why certain drugs can't be used together, it's very important. So bear that in mind and build a strong foundation so that you can build on later on. So the first tip I wish all vet students knew is to use the free resources available online. So number one is the VIN, Veterinary Information Network. It's free for vet students, so why wouldn't you use it? It's very good. They have loads of clinical and some non-clinical stuff as well. And they have the IVALA, which is the 3D anatomy resource, where you can review your anatomy and just look at things in a 3D level. Sure, there are books, there's lectures, you know, and dissections and things. But if you learn in a different way, it's always worth exploring that website to just have a look. Other tips for learning anatomy is to draw it out yourself. I remember getting a set of bones in first year um, and just you know having a play with them and try to visualize where certain ligaments go where, where certain muscles go where. In short, learning anatomy doesn't have to be intimidating as long as you have these tools. And also, if you're like me, as someone who learns better watching videos, our vet school had dissection videos that we could all access and just have a... Um, and basically, you can take your time, look at the videos and pause in areas where you feel like you don't have enough knowledge in. So it's worth asking your vet school if they have that kind of resource. Second is active recall. I know we've probably heard this term active recall a lot, um, but it is very useful and there's lots of science and evidence behind how it works and why it works. So what this means is that you actively recall the information that uh, you need to learn. So for example, once you had a lecture and you write down your notes and your summaries, and then you just take a blank piece of paper and you try to actively recall, you know, what did I learn in that lecture? And try not to rely on your notes because that's cheating uh, and you have to actively recall it in your own brain so that you can understand where your gaps are and then you know where to focus your attention on and where to review the material. There are so many videos on this and you can go down a literal rabbit hole but the traditional method is to use paper flashcards that you can just review and then test yourself. Otherwise there's other apps like Anki. I use Notion as well for this function. You can even draw your own mind maps as well. The third thing is space repetition. So space repetition is literally what it means. So you review your work today for example and then you have a brain Break tomorrow and then you review the same work again and you just repeat this process. It can take as little as even 15 to 30 minutes a day if you're trying to fit in your busy veterinary you know lectures and practicals and things and the idea is that if you do this space repetition earlier on it's much better than cramming before the exam. Apps like Anki is very useful for that so if you haven't tried Anki before I think Loads of people have been talking about this on the internet already, so you've probably heard of it. Basically, you create your own flashcards and then you test yourself. And for the flashcards that you get wrong, the app itself will sort of like bring it up again so that you train yourself again and again and again until you know the answer and so then it comes up less. I'll link some videos below that talk about it in more detail and you can try it out. The third tip is Cornell note taking. I really wish I knew about this method when I first started because when I first started in first year, my notes were all over the place. I was trying to create a little pretty mind map or trying to jot down every single thing that the lecturer was saying, every tiny detail. And at the end of the lecture, I was caught up with trying to make sure everything is in one place, like organizing my notes without actually understanding what went on. So try not to do that because number one is wasting your time and you're not actually um, paying attention to what the lecturer is saying in the lecture in terms of what is very important. In brief, Cornell note taking system looks like you have your notes and your cues. So on your notes, you write down sort of what the lecturer has emphasized in the lecture in sort of like bullet points. Try not to write every single point down that's on the presentation slide and also, you know, not 
copy word for word what is given you in the handout. That's not the point. Um, the point is to try and understand the key concepts of what's going on in the lecture. If you have any questions about what's going on in the moment, you can write it down on the Q column. Or if you're brave enough, well, I encourage you to be brave enough to you know raise your hand during the lecture. If that's allowed, just to ask the question because participating in a lecture and asking questions is also a very active way to get involved and it reinforces your memory as well. After the lecture, when you have your main points that uh, you've absorbed during the lecture, you can write down little questions that will trigger the, those answers. So for example, in a cardiology lecture where they explore things like um, mitral valve disease in dogs. So, you know, mitral, mitral valve disease is very common in Cavalier King Charles Spaniel dogs due to their genetics and things. And your cue could be, so what breed is commonly known to have mitral valve disease in dogs? So that could be like a question and an answer just to try and prompt you. This is a very simplified version. At the end of the page, I highly recommend writing a summary of what you learn in that lecture. It can be very tricky because the lecturer might have thrown a hundred different concepts at you, um, but it's very important to write a summary down so you know what's important in that lecture. The fourth technique is the Feynman technique, or literally teaching others. So when you absorb the knowledge that the lecturer has given to you, whether in handout form or in a presentation or in a tutorial, you absorb the information and try to explain it to your friend or explain it in simple terms to your non vetty friend to try and see whether you can do that. Because what you want to avoid is memorizing certain keywords that make you think you understand the subject. But when you explain it to a non vetty person, Without those keywords, you struggle. So it's very good in highlighting areas where you think you understand the concept, but you don't actually understand it. So it's very good to practice that. An example could be explaining the pathogenesis for canine parvovirus, for example. So we know canine parvovirus is like a non-enveloped uh, virus that is very contagious and it attacks rapidly dividing cells in your um, intestines, bone marrow, and your lymphoid tissue. And because of these, where they attack these cells, um, and if you explain it to like a person who doesn't know medical terms, so they like to attack the intestine. So when your intestine cell, intestinal cells are damaged, you get diarrhea because you know that's damage. If your bone marrow is damaged, your bone marrow produces white blood cells, so you get neutropenia, so like reduce um, neutrophils, reduce white blood cells, things like that. So you try to explain and also this reinforces your memory as well and makes sense on how the diseases happen. And it's very useful in the clinical context when you explain to clients in the future. If you don't have anyone around to torment them with your veterinary knowledge, you can always just speak to like a soft toy animal, speak to your pet, things like that. Just speak out loud basically so that you can hear your thoughts and know actually if you're you're saying something that makes sense or not. Personally, I enjoy study groups because of this because we get to ask each other questions back and forth to reinforce our knowledge and if we stumble upon a concept we don't fully understand, we can look it up together and then through that experience it sort of like reinforces your memory. So the last two points is about actually doing the studying. One is to have some consistency with the Pomodoro technique. If you have heard of that, which is setting like a 25 minute timer, so you're not distracted. Things like forest app, or even on your phone, you just like a do not disturb focus mode, things like that, just to stop distracting yourself. Distractions is, is real, it's really hard, but you just have to turn everything off. Airplane mode, sit down, quiet environment, make your environment really nice and enjoyable um, in a library, things like that, just to get you going. Things like the two minute rule is also really good where you just sit down and do a task for two minutes so that you just get going. And the second thing is closing the action intention gap. This basically means just take action. So you know, you have every intention in the world to study, you're watching all these videos, you've prepared your notes really nicely, you've got nice stationery, you've got your uh, Notion app, but you actually have to sit down and do the work because because you can consume and go down a rabbit hole of all these different techniques and learn the science behind it. But actually, that's not going to help you if you don't actually do the work. For me, I like to ask myself, what's the next step that I can take that doesn't take more than two minutes or even like five seconds? So it could be booking in a study date with yourself or you know, at a session at the library, a clinical skill session, or scheduling something with your friend, putting it in your calendar app so that you schedule it, that you're gonna do it and then actually do it. You could even stop this video now and just take your book out and start active recalling what your anatomy lecture was on Monday and see how many facts you remember from that day and then reinforce your knowledge. Go on to Ivala right now and have a look at the antibrachium, for example, or like the hind limb, things like that. So to summarize what we've discussed today, 
Number one is using free tools online for vet students such as Ivala or Vin. Um, I'll link some more as well on here. Second tip is the importance of active recall. Learn how to use that behavior, continuously build that network, that neuron network to actively recall certain information. You'll thank your future self for it. Third is to use space repetition alongside it as well. Fourth is Cornell note taking. The main concept is try to write down main points instead of trying to remember everything. Fifth is teaching others. So group studying is very useful. The Feynman technique, have a look into it. Six is building consistency with the Pomodoro technique and the two minute rule. And lastly is to actually just take action. Finally, some personal notes on surviving first year. In first year, you do do lots of you know studying and things. There should be practicals as well. However, if you feel like you're not getting enough practical experience, then take ownership of it and be proactive. Heck, you can even organize a clinical skill session, you know, get in touch with your vet school coordinator, the vet society, and ask the sort of senior vet students if they're free to do a suturing session with you, you know, placing cannulas, taking bloods. You can be proactive and ask for those things. I definitely recommend, and you can always put that on your CV later on if you, you know organize these sessions you can also volunteer in a vet clinic just to get more exposure as well but try not to stress too much because you will have five or six years to build up all these skills so don't stress too much about it but it's okay if you want to be proactive that's good too so take action get experimenting on what works for you now so that you know when you come to second third fourth or fifth year you'll be very good at studying basically and you Focus more time building your soft skills, clinical skills, communication, enjoying some university life. And also, I highly recommend knowing yourself and knowing what actually energizes you and refreshes you in terms of taking productive breaks during studying. That can look like taking a walk to go and see the vet school cows, but that can also look like watching Netflix and just relaxing in the evening. The important thing is to choose these activities with intention so you don't end up feeling guilty, doom scrolling, and then hating yourself and then not feeling good about it and the cycle continues. It took me a while to realize that actually negatively criticizing self-criticism, that's not really very helpful to anyone. And it's better to actually know yourself and say, okay, I'm actually tired. I need to complete this task, but let's just take a break and do something that I actually want to do and then revisit that task, negotiating with yourself basically. So I hope this video motivates you and encourages you. Try not to put too much pressure on yourself, especially in first year. You don't want to burn out so quickly. It's good to be proactive, but also remember to take breaks, finding your balance and really knowing yourself and knowing what works for you. I really hope you have a good rest of your week and all the best in your first year. You got this. And if you like this video, you might like the Notion template setup video on how I record everything I learn in vet work and how I organize it. Until then, see you in the next video. Take care now.